stupid street hockey. I wish we never went to that dump. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst things that happened to Stewie Griffin. I don't know. Mom and Dad just uh, stuck a book on my head and, and left. For this list, we're looking at the most physically, mentally, and emotionally painful things to ever happen to this fan favorite character. Keep in mind, there will be some mild spoilers. What do you think is the worst of the worst to ever happen to Stewie? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Tormented by Brian Brian and Stewie have always had a very odd friendship. Hey, Brian, care to place a wager? Tomorrow night on Fox's Celebrity Boxing, I've got Carol Channing beating Mike Tyson in three rounds. They obviously share a deep love, but they also commit horribly cruel acts upon each other. Here, Brian spends the whole episode exacting mental torture on Stewie. <laughs> ah, this is gonna be fun. Although, we can't say Stewie doesn't deserve it this particular time. He did beat Brian with a golf club, push him down the stairs, shoot him in both kneecaps, and light him on fire when Brian didn't have the money to pay him back. It might sound like Stewie gets off easy, but Brian mentally messes with him so badly that Stewie literally begs for Brian's revenge. When's the beating gonna come, Brian? Just tell me when it's gonna come. Just do something, anything. Look, look, I I'll do it. I'll do it first. <laughs> look. And just when Stewie thinks the torment is over, Brian shoves him in front of a bus for good measure. Number 19, being baptized in tainted holy water. The Griffins aren't a particularly religious family, but when Peter's father Francis comes for a visit, he criticizes them so much about it that Peter agrees to baptize Stewie to please him. If we get Stewie baptized, you and all other old people have to acknowledge and be aware that there's crap in the corners of your mouth. I'll think about it! Francis is so obsessed with this mission that he ignores the priest when he says that the holy water is tainted and baptizes Stewie himself. There's no such thing as tainted holy water. Come on, we'll do it ourselves. Stewie Griffin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're pretty sure that's not how it works. Poor Stewie becomes sick and needs to be quarantined. As if that isn't bad enough, Brian relentlessly plays pranks on him while he's stuck inside a bubble. Sometimes Stewie deserves what he gets, but this time, he doesn't deserve it. Oh, you think you're so funny. Well, as soon as I figure out where I am, you're dead, Brian! <laughs> Number 18, getting eaten by a dingo. The short version of this story is that Peter suddenly discovers that he has a vestigial twin named Chip. Kids, remember how when you were little, you always wanted a neck, Uncle? No. Well, now you got one! <laughs> Though they initially are the best of friends, they eventually get detached, and the family likes Chip better than Peter. So Peter decides he doesn't like him anymore. Well, what are you gonna do? I don't know yet, but I'll come up with something. After all, I'm the guy who invented choose your own adventure or have pie in bed. Naturally, the only way Peter sees to settle this problem is to have Chip eaten by a dingo. Unfortunately for Stewie, the dingo decides he'd rather eat him instead. Poor Stewie gets munched and dragged out of the house by the dingo. Hey, um, it's 3 p.m. Should I give up on breakfast? Ah, Brian! Browser history! Clear it! Peter doesn't seem to care, and it's not even mentioned again. Number 17, getting vaporized by his past self. Throughout the show's lengthy run, Stewie experiences many adventures through space and time. And clearly, he was always destined for it. Enough is enough is enough. I want him out. I want him out that door now. When he meets his future self, Stu, Stewie returns to the future with him to see how awesome his life has become. You can't just leave me. I must know my future. Sorry, it's against the rules. Goodbye, Stewie. Surprise! However, he finds his life not to be quite what he expected. In an effort to change his future, Stewie returns to the moment that changed his life forever and saves his past self from an accident at the pool, at which point past Stewie promptly vaporizes his future self with a ray gun. Did they ever find a successful vehicle for Ellen Cleghorn? Oh, that's so funny. I asked that very same question and never got an answer. Well, then you're as disposable as she is! Such ingratitude! Although, to be fair, future Stewie kinda had to die in order to tie up all the time travel loose ends. Number 16, falling in toxic waste. Due to Peter's paranoia, or maybe his stupidity, the Griffins are seemingly the only family in the town of Quahog to escape the devastating effects of Y2K. Hey Lois, you remember when I was the third hardy boy? Peter, there was no third hardy boy. Oh really? Just like there was no apocalypse, he shoots, he scores! Quagmire and Cleveland end up fused together somehow, and Joe ends up stuck to his driveway, unable to move. Bring it on! 
on. While the rest of his family escapes any similar fates, Stewie is dropped in toxic waste and grows octopus tentacles. This guy just can't catch a break. His condition goes so far that he eventually lays a mountain of eggs. Well, that wasn't so bad. I don't know what these women are always complaining about. <laughs> and, like usual, his family does not seem to care one little bit. Number 15. Getting Fused with Rupert This is, without a doubt, one of the most terrifying things to ever happen to Stewie. I don't understand why I have to babysit Stewie. I mean, what's he really going to do if we leave him by himself? While experimenting with his new invention, teleportation pods, Stewie makes a life-altering mistake when he accidentally leaves Rupert in the pod with him. The result is a Stewie-Rupert hybrid, which is just as horrifying as it sounds. On the plus side, the pods work. Ah, I'm a monster! Let's just be happy this nightmare only exists in one of Family Guy's infamous cutaways and isn't canon. Anyone who watched The Fly, the reference for this joke, knows how badly this could have turned out for Stewie. Uh, look at your face! Something happened when you went through, Seth. You've got to get some help. Number 14. Eating the Yellow Snow A big part of Stewie and Brian's friendship is based on the epic and elaborate pranks they pull on each other. But sometimes, the simple classics are the best. Or, from Stewie's point of view, the worst. Hey, check it out, lemon snow. What? Yeah, that stuff's delicious. With all of his genius, it's easy to forget sometimes that Stewie is just a baby. But here, Brian capitalizes on his youth and innocence when he persuades Stewie to eat some lemon snow. What is it, like Italian ice? Yeah, exactly, like a sorbet. Of course, we all know what's really going on, but poor Stewie does not know any better and gobbles it all up. Gross. You bastard! I was having fun playing in the snow, and now you've ruined it like a pizza place ruins a salad! Number 13. Being kept in Peter's pants. It's a major part of the show that Stewie's family can't understand him. Or perhaps they just ignore him. Like, can the family understand the baby, or or, or what, what's the deal with that? Well, we bet Stewie wishes Peter would ignore him just a little bit more when Peter decides to store Stewie in his pants as a way of overcompensating in an area where he feels lacking. Lois doesn't even notice Stewie is missing until she sees him moving around in there. Ugh! Let me out of this stink-filled corduroy dungeon! Is that better or worse than the time Peter put Stewie in his stomach? And again, no one even realizes until they catch Stewie moving around inside. Stewie, we're entering a dog show. Where's Stewie? He ate me! I ate him. Number 12. Getting sunburned. Anyone who's been sunburned before knows just how painful it can be, but it probably wasn't worse than what happened to Stewie. Hey, Stewie. Nice sunburn. God, you horse's ass! When Stewie forgets to put on sunscreen, he experiences getting a tan for the first time and immediately becomes obsessed with it. <gasps> wow, look at me! I'm a young Eartha kit! Rrr, President Johnson, bring our boys home from Southeast Asia. It's an unwinnable war. Rrr. He becomes so addicted that he starts tanning every day in his very own tanning bed. But when he accidentally falls asleep during one of his sessions, he wakes up terribly sunburned. Uh, hey buddy, I was just coming to tell you it's time to get out. I've been in there for six and a half hours, you son of a bitch! Don't touch me! His entire body is red, and he can barely move. You can practically feel his skin sizzling. It's so bad, he even has a skin cancer scare. Write down my final thoughts. Oh, come on. I don't have much time. <sighs> oh, squiggly line in my eye fluid. Number 11, getting a concussion playing football. Stewie gets upset when a woman at the grocery store mistakes him for a girl. Excuse me, ma'am, your little girl dropped her teddy bear. What? Little girl? <laughs> yeah, she hates it when she drops that. So naturally, he begins overcompensating and decides to join a football team. What's up, dudes? Stewie, what the hell is all this? Uh, only the most manly thing ever. A little something called American football. Is that a Michael Sam jersey? Yep, two boy names. Doubly masculine. Stewie is noticeably smaller than the other kids, but insists on being put in the game, despite the coach's warnings that he will get destroyed out there. Brian's cheering and jeering from the sidelines probably doesn't help things much. Come on, Stewie, give your dog something to post on Facebook. Something to post on Facebook. Let's go. During his first play in the game, Stewie gets terribly concussed, and Brian and Chris try to cover it up. All right, and nobody's blocking. <laughs> oh my god, Stewie! Are you okay? Back off. He may have a concussion. A concussion? You do me an honor, Lieutenant, but my dance card is full. 
You'd think they'd have known better after the last time the Griffins tried to cover up one of Stewie's injuries, but more on that later. Number 10. Losing an Ear Getting extremely sunburned or concussed may seem pretty bad, and Stewie pretty much brought those incidents on himself. But this one is all Brian's fault. Brian gets out of hand running a club and drunkenly loses Stewie on the road. Brian, there you are. Do you have any idea what time it is? Stewie was supposed to be in bed two hours ago. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he's, um, he's, he was right here, right next to me, like four hours ago. Stewie does manage to make it home on his own, but not without losing an ear to a hungry deer. Hey, Brian, remember me? I'm the guy you left standing at the counter at McDonald's with a bag full of burgers. You know, it's funny. I tried to walk home and, um... A lot of hungry deer walking around at this hour of the night. And, um, oh, here's where the story gets fun. Uh, you may have noticed I'm missing an ear. Losing an appendage is bad enough, but nothing adds insult to injury like knowing it happened as a result of your best friend's negligence. And what's even worse than that is that the family doesn't seem to care about Stewie's missing ear, or even notice for that matter. Yeah, uh, don't worry, I don't need to go to the hospital or anything. I'll just use this Mr. Potato Head piece. Number nine, getting herpes. Brian dropped the ball with the whole Stewie's ear thing, but this time he knew what he was doing. Feeling that they're drifting apart, Stewie wants to deepen his bond with Brian. I think we should hold hands more often. There you go, we're blood brothers now. You happy? So they cut their hands and swap blood. However, things go horribly wrong when Stewie wakes up the next morning to discover that Brian has given him herpes. Ah! You son of a bitch, you gave me herpes! What, what are you talking about? Naturally, Stewie is furious. It's a wonder Stewie didn't resort to his old murderous ways when he discovered that Brian knew he had herpes before they swapped blood. Oh, hey, Brian. And who's your date? Wow, you must be such a good person to knowingly go out with a herpes-riddled dirtbag. Ew! I'm sorry, Brian. I I've got to go. Number 8. Getting killed after Brian sells him out. Speaking of Brian inflicting intentional harm on Stewie, this time he gets Stewie killed. When Stewie teleports them to Vegas, he ends up duplicating them, leaving one pair of them nothing but good luck and the other nothing but bad luck. Oh, it's beautiful. Everything's just so beautiful here. Ugh, this is miserable. Three hour delay and a completely full flight. Don't look at us, you pig. Take your juicy sweatpants and your dirty pillow from home and your bucket of coke and get the hell out of my sight. The bad luck versions burn all their cash, so they borrow money from a loan shark and can't pay it back. The loan shark mistakenly goes after the good versions, and when they can't pay him either, he offers them a choice as to who will die first, and Brian wastes no time whatsoever selling Stewie out. He tells the loan shark to shoot Stewie first, and he obliges. All right, enough of this! You, dog, pick which one of you two is gonna die! What? You can't ask me to decide something like that. I mean, the life of every being is sacred. Just like the life Fine, of- Fine, I'll kill you! No, no, kill him! He's a baby! He, he won't even remember he was alive! Thankfully, there was another Stewie available, so no harm, no foul, right? Hey. Hey. Number 7. Being mistreated at daycare. That's right, it's Brian yet again. While picking up Stewie from his daycare center, Brian sees just how terrible it is. The children are left alone, the place is filthy, and there are dangerous objects everywhere. What did I tell you, Brian? It's a nightmare in here. Oh my god! Brian is appalled and demands to speak to the daycare teacher, like any good guardian would. But when he meets Miss Emily, Brian completely changes his tune when he sees how attractive she is. Excuse me, are you Miss Emily? Yeah, hi. Who are you? Uh, Brian. Brian Steele. I was just dropping Stewie off. Oh yeah! I should probably go back in there, see how everyone's doing, I guess. Ah, they're fine. Brian not only ignores the abuse, he also contributes to it just so he can get with Miss Emily. Stewie's seen Brian do some pretty terrible things in pursuit of a lady, but this example is definitely up there as one of the worst. Oh, hi, Brian. I thought you had a busy day at your legal practice. Oh. Hey, Emily. Yeah, I, I had some time between cases. I thought I'd see how you were doing. That's so nice of you. Let me just put these bags away and throw some saltines in the yard for the kids. Number 6. Becoming a Child Star Peter and Lois pretty much blow Stewie's college fund. Today, though, please let there be money in our bank account. Amen. 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 Damn it, it didn't work. And that's only the lead-up to this entry. In order to make more money, Peter and Lois enter Stewie in a contest to land a gig as the spokesperson for Scooter's Peanut Butter. 
When he does, Peter and Lois go way overboard to turn him into a child star. You know, Stewie actually got a call for another commercial tomorrow. <laughs> Who knows? This could be the beginning of a nice career for him. They make him train day and night. They even force feed him, let's call it a mixed drink, designed to keep him awake and high on energy, as well as other things. Stewie could have been damaged for life, and eventually, Brian has to step in to make Peter and Lois realize what they're doing to him. Someone needs to call social services on them already. Oh, hey, you caught me pigging out. I'm dipping this celery stalk into some lemon water, but don't freak out, I'm just gonna smell it and then throw it in the trash. Number five, getting no love as Brian's manager. Okay, what is this dude's deal? Does he even like Stewie? When Brian finally, finally writes that bestseller he's been bragging about for years, Stewie becomes his manager. Yeah, we're walking in now. Make sure Tom Tucker knows he has 20 minutes and he is to only talk about the book. No personal questions. All right, are you okay? You good? You, you need anything? All right. All right, we're inside and there is nobody here to greet us. Stewie does everything for Brian, yet is met with nothing but ingratitude. The more fame Brian gets, the worse and worse he treats Stewie. He even leaves Stewie alone on the street once to get back to their hotel by himself. All because he thinks he should be just as famous as Renee Zellweger. Get over here. What, is everything okay? No, everything is not okay. Can you figure out what the problem is? I, I don't... I, I honestly have no... Oh god. How do you think I feel walking out of the back room of a restaurant and seeing Renee Zellweger eating in the front room? Stewie has to endure Brian's verbal abuse and even being ruthlessly fired. Poor Stewie. I am so sorry. I am done with you. Do you hear me? Done. Get out of here now. Brian, please. You're fired. Number four, being breastfed by Peter. Though the women in Peter's life might be glad he finally attended some sensitivity training, Stewie would argue that it did much more harm than good. Now that you've felt a woman's pain, the learning can begin. The training ignites some extreme motherly feelings in Peter, and he goes a little crazy trying to, um, nurture everyone. He even goes so far as to try to breastfeed Stewie. Of course, it doesn't work, and Stewie is traumatized by the experience. The look on Stewie's face when he realizes what is happening really says it all. And when he pulls that hair out of his mouth, yeah. Number three, losing his best friend. Stewie and Brian do some truly cruel things to each other, but it cannot be denied that they share a true and deep love for each other. I love you as one loves another person whom one simply cannot do without. While playing in the street, Brian is tragically hit and killed by a car. Usually on this show, when something like this happens, there's some sort of last minute save. But this time, Stewie had just before destroyed his only means of doing so, his time machine. This time machine has almost killed us a hundred times, Brian, and yesterday was just too close a call, so I've decided to get rid of it before something irreparable happens. Stewie is understandably distraught at the brutal loss of his best friend, and it's heartbreaking to watch as he has to accept there's nothing he can do. Everyone in this family is so damn thrilled with you, they've forgotten all about Brian! Well, I'm not thrilled. I'll never forget Brian. He was my best friend. This isn't only one of the worst things to happen to Stewie. It's one of the most devastating things the show has ever done, period. Number two, being driven to madness by an album cover. Oh my God, I haven't seen this one in forever. Look, look at this, Queen News of the World. Check it out. Ah! Whoa, what's the matter? What the hell is that? A killer robot monster? Stewie is so intelligent, sometimes it's easy to forget that after all these years, he's still just a baby. While looking through Peter's old album collection, Stewie comes across the Queen album News of the World, which absolutely terrifies him. Does it eat little boys? I don't know, maybe, if it's hungry. <laughs> In Stewie's defense, a giant killer robot is pretty scary. Stewie is so terrified by the Queen album cover that he is driven literally insane. It probably isn't helpful that Brian finds the whole thing absolutely hysterical and constantly taunts him with the image. Oh, good morning, Rupert. Please tell me you set the timer on the coffee maker because I completely forgot. Ah, ah! <coughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! Brian's torture is so relentless, it drives Stewie to kill Rupert and try to take his own life just to escape it. Rupert, we won't give that evil robot the satisfaction of killing us. We'll go together, on our own terms. 
See you on the other side. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Falling Down the Stairs While Meg and Chris are fighting, they end up knocking Stewie down the stairs, rendering him unconscious and giving him a huge gash in his head. Well, I'm off to buy imaginary groceries. Do you think he's okay? Though that first part is an accident, the rest is not. It's understandable at first that Chris and Meg panic, but at some point you'd think that they'd get their baby brother some real help. But they decide the best course of action is to cover up his injury. Literally. They put a hat on him and hope nobody notices. Oh, look at my little cowboy. Come on, Stewie, up in your high chair. Boy, he must be starving. <laughs> Eventually, Peter finds out, and his response is to throw Stewie under Lois's car to blame the whole thing on her. Well, at least Stewie was unconscious for the whole thing. Cartoon logic, am I right? Hey, I just found out it's November. What the f happened? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.